Hello, my loves. Welcome back. I hope you are fabulous today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kai. I'm a hairstylist and a makeup artist. I do live makeup videos over on Facebook and sometimes here on YouTube as well. I also do different product reviews and tutorials. And you can check me out over on Instagram at styles by underscore Kyle. In today's video, we're going to be playing with the Marilyn Monroe collection from Besame Cosmetics. I did an earlier video where I unboxed this collection and kind of featured every item and talked about the items and what they were inspired by. I did not play with or swatch any of the makeup yet. So this will be my first time using any of these products. If you are interested in learning more about the Marilyn Monroe collection from Besame Cosmetics, you can watch my unboxing video where I went into a little bit of detail about what inspired the collection. This collection came with this little card here and I figured it would be fun to kind of go along with this. I said in my last video, I have already done a lot of research into Marilyn Monroe's makeup routine, but we're gonna go by the card that they included. So this is a step-by-step -step tutorial on Marilyn Monroe's makeup routine. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So we're gonna open up our box here, which is gorgeous. I'll just give y'all a little peek at that. In case you didn't watch my last video, and if you didn't, why not? I'm going to start with the Marilyn Monroe Collection Bombshell Shadow Quad. So this actually has three eyeshadows and a blush in it. So the first step for the face is to sweep peach blush under the cheekbone to contour, blending up into the hairline, and adding a touch of blush to the tip of the nose, the temples, and the chin. Her makeup routine was meant to make her face look very heart-shaped, meaning that everything was kind of like brought in and narrowed in down here, and then left more open and bright around the eye and uh, forehead, cheek area, so that it made this feel much wider and this feel much smaller. But they would use her blush to help contour her face, so the, the placement was very specific. Sweep a little bit of that under the cheekbone there. It's a very pretty blush. It's very pigmented. It's got like a peachy, pinky kind of color to it. And this was based on Gabriella's research. Um, she watched a lot of film and looked at a lot of photos of Marilyn. And this is what she determined was kind of her blush color. If you look at this cheek compared to this cheek now, this is kind of really accentuated as being like lengthened. And again, making sure that we sweep that back into the hairline. This is a really pretty blush. It applies really nicely. The color of it is gorgeous. I love peach blush. So this is like right up my alley as far as blush goes. So then the other place that they would put blush is on the temple area here. And then the tip of the nose. And the chin, which I always blush my chin anyway. The next step is to use the white cream highlighter to add radiance to the face. Place at the center of the forehead, down the nose, and in the cupid's bow. Blend well for a natural effect. And then use your finger to dab the highlight cream along the top of the cheekbone from the hairline to the corner of the eye. Okay, so we'll get out our white cream highlighter. Top looks like that. So this is like thicker than I expected it to be. I thought it was going to be like very creamy and the way that it goes onto your finger is very kind of like translucent a little bit so like it leaves that white pigment but it's not completely opaque okay so let's see how this works so we're going to dab this in the center of the forehead it says to blend out for a natural look and then next it says to take it down the nose And then lastly, I'm going to dot along the top of the cheekbone from the corner of the eye out to the hairline. You can see how much that accentuates that part of the face, really brings out the cheekbone and makes this seem so long and wide, giving that heart-shaped appearance to the face like we were talking about earlier. 
I really like this product. I'm definitely going to continue to use this, maybe even in my everyday routine, I don't know. But I love how that accentuates that and it's very subtle. Not that the effect is subtle, like it really lifts and highlights those areas, but I like that it's not shimmery and shiny like a traditional highlighter that we would use now. It gives the same effect, but it's matte and because it's cream it blends out really beautifully and it just like gives us really nice bright lifted effect to the skin so really enjoying that okay so the next step here says apply silver screen powder on the sides of the nose okay i guess this is very similar to uh like when you contour your nose and you would use setting powder down the sides of your nose to help contour it same thing. So this is the Marilyn Silver Screen Powder, and this compact is absolutely gorgeous and weighs a ton, you guys. Like, I wish that you could feel how heavy this was because it's ridiculous. And these compacts are refillable too, which is really nice. This powder definitely has a very brightening effect to it, so I do see now it, it is definitely helping to contour the nose by creating that light area. It helps to accentuate the bridge of the nose and give it a more defined, straighter appearance. Marilyn was very insecure about her nose. She actually had rhinoplasty to correct her nose and then even after that, continued to have her makeup artist contour her nose. Um, she was just never really happy with it. Marilyn and I have that in common. I can't afford any rhinoplasty, but I'm just feathering that out a little bit into the cheek area there. Marilyn wasn't big on powder. She really liked that fresh glowy look and she believed that hydration was the key to youthful skin. She used a lot of moisturizing products. Vaseline and Nivea cream were two of her favorites that she used on a regular basis. Okay, so next I think we're going to do eyes and I usually do my brows before I do my eyes. So we'll go ahead and go over the brow section in here. I did already kind of lightly fill in my brows. My eyebrows I think are a little little bit thicker than hers would have been traditionally. So it says to create a high arch brow, use the light brown shadow in an angled brush for easiest application. The point of the arch should be just above the outer edge of the pupil. She really accentuated the top corner of her brow and it gave a lifted and wide appearance again to the eye and forehead because we're trying to create that heart shaped face. So it says that for the brows you should use this light brown shadow and and an angled brush, which I have right here. So we're just gonna kind of lightly go over my brows with this, even though I've already filled them in. And I'll just kind of come in and accentuate that peak because her the peak of her brows would have been very defined. I feel like this color uh, comes across darker on my brow than it did in the pan. I'm pulling my tail out a little bit at the end because traditionally brows in the 50s would have come down a little bit farther than we take them now. Okay, so now we have this really nice kind of lifted pointed shape to the end of our brows. It's helping to accentuate the width of the forehead there. Not that I need any help with that, but it's what Marilyn did. So it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me. For eyes, the first step it says is to apply the white cream highlighter to the lower lid and the inner corner of the eye and blend thoroughly. Okay, so we're gonna pop back over into our white cream highlighter. So she would have used this almost as like a primer. It would help to give her a really light base for her shadow and kind of help to even out the tone in a way making sure that we also press that into this corner of the eye here, because that really helps to open up and brighten that area. And that's how she would have done it. And I just kind of blended that all the way up to the brow bone there, because we're gonna put shadow over top of all of that anyway. So that's just gonna act as a really good primer to hold all of our eyeshadow in place. Next, we're going to use the cream colored shadow all over the lid up to the brow bone. And that shadow sticks really nicely to that cream. She really nice pigment, goes on really smooth. Okay, the next step says lightly sweep the light brown shadow into the crease. And some of that light brown. that all the way across. 
just crease there. Deepen the crease with the taupe shadow blending inward. This shade would have been used more concentrated on the outside of Marilyn's crease area to accentuate the outer part of the eye. It gave her that kind of heavy bedroom seductive eye that she had. So we're gonna grab a little bit of that taupe shade and I'm going to put this right on the outer corner of the crease there and then we'll blend that in so that we get most concentration of that color right on that outer edge of the crease. Okay, so you can see already how this is giving us this very like heavy looking eyelid, kind of bringing that lid forward, creating that depth in the outer crease of the eye is making the eye look more heavy. It's giving us that very Maryland vibe. The next step is to line the upper lash line with the Espresso Eyeliner Pencil, slightly winging up and out at the outer corner. Okay, so now we've lined both eyelids on top with the brown liner, and we've left a little uh, upward flick on the outside of the eye there. Lightly define the bottom lash line with the light brown shadow. That little angled brush we used earlier. I'm really getting close to the lash. Create a drop shadow with the taupe shade. This will mimic the natural shadow of the lashes, yes. We're gonna take that taupe shadow and we're going to come right to the middle of the bottom of the eye here. And we're gonna start to draw a little line off the eye and right on the outer corner here kind of extend this out okay and then it says that you should place the white cream highlighter in that V between your liner on top in that little shadow that we just created, but I'm actually going to use the white eyeliner for that, just because I feel like it's gonna be easier to work with in that little space, rather than trying to get that cream in there. So you're just basically drawing a triangle in between those two areas. all the way to the corner of the eye. And you want this to touch the inner corner of your eye because in a second here, we're going to line the waterline and you want that white to be like a continuous shape. So really get in the corner and then draw that triangle shape. Once we get uh, the rest of it done and we get our lashes on and all that stuff, like you'll see how this all comes together and creates that Marilyn eye. So the next thing we're going to do is apply the snow liner on the waterline and inner outer corners of the eyes to brighten. Yes, okay, so we did the outer corner already. So we just need to place this in the waterline. These white eyeliners from Besame are like one of my favorite white eyeliners. I got one with the Lucille Ball collection when that was out, and it is one of my favorites. Okay, so we did that white liner in the waterline, and then also a little bit on the inner corner of each eye there to brighten that up. Apply Girl's Best Friend Mascara to the lashes, and then apply half set of lashes to the outer corners. This is the Girl's Best Friend Mascara from the collection. it applies it's very cute I feel like it lengthens a little bit it's not super heavy kind of defines and separates the lashes which I really like in a mascara it's really amazing the effort that was put into creating Marilyn Monroe Marilyn was often said to have referred to Marilyn in a third person as if she was a character 
that everything about her was very produced and very purposefully done. Every little step of her makeup routine. Somebody was once quoted saying, you don't simply wake up looking like Marilyn Monroe. She knows every trick in the book. And I think that's very, very true. Okay, so then it says to apply the half set of lashes. So we'll pull out the little Marilyn Monroe set of lashes here. There's two sets in here, a full set and a half set. The half lash is the bottom set here. So that's the one it recommends applying for Marilyn's look. She was known for wearing a half lash, which gave her that really like droopy, heavy feeling to her eyes. I do like how thin the band is on these because I feel like they won't be very noticeable. Ah, see that little half lash really helps to like pull the attention to the outer corner of the eye. Again, opening up the center of the face around the eyes to make this all appear wider. Let's go ahead and pop the other one on really quick. These are the cutest little lashes. Okay, we've got our lashes on and then it does say that you should do one more coat of mascara to fuse your natural lashes to the false lashes. But honestly, I don't even feel like I can see a separation between the two. So I'm not going to do that. And that's actually going to be better for the longevity of these lashes anyway. It does say to contour the tip of the nose like Marilyn, use the taupe shadow and a small compact brush to draw a half circle on, on the sides of the nose, blending well. Do this lightly to create a subtle rounded shape at the tip of the nose. Finish by placing the white cream highlighter on the very tip of the nose and blending well to achieve the effect. So, and I know it says to use the taupe by itself, but that's very, very gray. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the taupe and the light brown. I think it's just gonna give a little bit more natural contour shade. And it said to do like a half circle. side of the tip of the nose. I'm also gonna get under my nose here because I don't have a cute little button nose like Marilyn did. Okay and then it says to take just a dot of the white cream highlighter and place that on the tip of the nose. We're gonna grab the red lip liner really quick. And before we do our lips, we are going to put a dot of this into the corner of the eye. So this was a old uh, Hollywood trick that they would use in order to make the eyes appear whiter. Just putting a dot of red, it was probably a lip liner, honestly, that she used um, in the corner of the eye. I'll kind of show you now that I've got that on the difference between the two eyes, it just kind of makes your eye pop a little bit more by deepening that inner corner. And I believe all we have left to do is lips. So for her lips, it says to use the berry lip liner to define the lip, overdraw the lip just slightly, creating a rounder shape at the outer corners, apply the red hot red lipstick, then the carnation red, then a touch of the cream white highlighter to the center of the bottom lip and then finish with gloss. So Marilyn was known to wear up to five layers of lip product at a time. So not only was she creating like this voluptuous lip by creating depth with different colors, but the sheer amount of volume of product on her lips also kind of helped to create that voluptuous shape to her lips. So her lip shape, it was a little bit more rounded at the top and at the cupid's bow area. And then it was kind of high on the outer corner of the mouth. It would draw her top lip slightly wider than her bottom lip so that it kind of over extended past her bottom lip. So out here is where we want to create that really rounded shape. If you draw from the corner of your mouth up, it helps to round that out. So then on the bottom lip, we want to start this slightly in from where the top lip ends. Okay. 
So now we're going to get our first red, which is the Red Hot Red from Besame Cosmetics. And these lipstick tubes were actually based off of a tube of lipstick that was found in Marilyn Monroe's collection. This was the one that Besame Cosmetics already created prior to this collection that was based off of Marilyn Monroe's lip color. and they would blot Marilyn's lips in between each application of color. So now we're going to come in with the next shade of red, which is the Carnation Red, same lipstick tube. This one is more of a pinky undertone red, whereas the first one is a very blue-based red. And this one they would have applied just to the center of her lips. So I'm actually just going to rub some of this onto my hand here. It's a really pretty color. And I'm just going to use my finger to apply this to the center of my lips. They probably would have used a brush. So it's just slightly brighter, so it's giving us a little bit more of that lightened effect towards the center of the lip. Blot that one more time. Okay, and then next we're going to take a little bit of that white cream highlight and we're going to dot that on the center of the bottom lip. You can see how that instantly gives you this like really pouty looking bottom lip, makes it look like it's much fuller and plumper. And then the last step would be the gloss, the red gloss. This is in the shade Rose Red. And again, I'm just going to put some of this on the back of my hand and then I'm going to use my finger to apply it. And again, this will be concentrated in the center of the lip. Marilyn did wear a gloss. Um, it was something that was specially formulated for her by her makeup artist, Alan Snyder. We don't know what was in the gloss, but it's speculated that it uh, had beeswax and peppermint oil in it, among other things. Okay, so I'm just going to take this, dot that. Onto the center of the lip there. Marilyn lip. All right, and that is our completed Marilyn Monroe inspired look using the Marilyn Monroe Valet Case from Besame Cosmetics. I think this turned out really beautifully. I think it came together really well. The lips are gorgeous. The products that they made for the lips, I really enjoy them and like putting them together that way looks so much like Marilyn's lip. I have like studied and studied her makeup and tried to figure out how to make like that exact Marilyn looking lip. And this is the closest that I have ever come to uh, feeling like it actually looks the way her lips looked on camera. So that's very impressive. Overall, the collection is absolutely beautiful. Gabriella did an amazing job kind of capturing the essence of Marilyn Monroe and her look. I love that they put this little card in here. Oh my gosh, you guys, I did not put my um, little beauty mark on, hello. Let's see, she usually had that right about here. It's a little past the smile lines there. And it was on her left side. I almost have a beauty mark there. I've got one there and one there. Okay, so as I was saying, I think that Gabriella did a really beautiful job with this collection. I love that these pieces were inspired by actual items owned by Marilyn Monroe. Just the vintage quality of everything and the quality of the materials used. So these are aluminum casings. This right here is so nice. The compact 
the black enamel, the Swarovski crystals, just stunning. I love that Gabriella, the owner of Base May Cosmetics, put so much thought and time into creating these collections and really trying to create the most authentic replicas of the makeup that she's basing the items off of. Congratulations to Gabriella on this collection. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm so glad that I was able to get my hands on one of these valet cases. There were only 200 of these made and they all have a uh, seal of authenticity on them. And uh, I just realized, so I got the number 61 and Marilyn's birthday was June 1st, which is 6-1. So that's really cool. I'm super excited about that. Like when I realized that today, I was like, <gasps> My case number is Marilyn's birthday. Anyway, I super enjoyed playing with this collection today. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video or somehow found it helpful. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you do that by hitting that subscribe button below. Also go check me out over on Facebook under the name Kai Styles and over on Instagram at styles by underscore Kyle. I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your day and until I see you next time, remember to be true to yourselves, be kind to one another, and most importantly, be beautiful. I love you all. I will see you in the next one.